Well, let's open our Bible in the book of uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's read about three verses uh, that are going to help us this uh, morning uh, to share the word uh, of uh, God. Um, we are in the book of Habakkuk in the Old Testament. This minor prophet Habakkuk, but such a beautiful and deep and deep, if you want, profound uh, a book that brings us uh, the word of God uh, today. Well, let's read. Let's read as follow. I will take my stand. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on the tablet, so he may run who reads it. For the vision, the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastened to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not uh, delay. Let's say amen to the word of God. Amen. I'll read again verse 3. For still the vision await its appointed time. It has them to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not uh, lie. Once again, amen to the word of God. Beloved, we all know there's no more, it's no more news or secret that uh, our world is uh, going through a terrible time, an unprecedented time that has actually uh, uh, disturbed, uh, that has actually disturbed our lives, that are actually, I mean, uh, changed so many things, that has brought actually so much uncertainties in the lives of many and uh, the global pandemic that we have uh, that we are facing right now has pushed many of us uh, really to review our year plan to review to go back to the uh, to the drawing board and reconsider so many things maybe which we planned uh, in the beginning of the year am i right there eh? hallelujah Amen. do i have a witness right there eh? it has pushed all of us beloved pushed us to a point where we have started thinking because uh, I would like to believe all of us, we were caught off guard. None of us has seen this coming. None of us has seen this coming even here in South Africa. When they first declared a state of uh, uh, national disaster and the president declared the lockdown for the first 21 days, I would like to believe personally, I don't know what is your, your, what was your view on that. I wouldn't, I, didn't, I wouldn't have imagined that we would get down to this very day, 17-7 already, am I right? That day of lockdown, I thought that it would be 21 days after that, uh, life will resume to normal. But uh, on the contrary, we are still heading uh, into this and we are still in, in the middle of the pandemic. By the way, in South Africa, yeah, we have not yet reached the peak of the of the, uh, the, the, the pandemic. So we, 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 we still, it will still actually, based on the scientific uh, evidences and whatsoever, it will still go up and up. So it has actually shuffled so many lives. And uh, there is, beloved, somewhere, I believe, I believe uh, some sort of questions also that are coming in our heart, in our mind. We have maybe started thinking as well and saying, will God also truly fulfill what he has said? It is now a question. Will he really do it? He will it really do it. But, uh, beloved, we need to remind, remember my mind ourselves in my pre previous two sermons, which I would recommend you really to listen to uh, on our YouTube channel, Graceful Life TV. In the two previous uh, sermons, uh, we talked about uh, that God has no stop working. Am I making sense right there? And I would like to repeat it unto you today, Church of God. Our God has not stopped working. Are we together right there? He has not to stop working. God is still working and he will continue to do so until his work in your life uh, will come to an end. Until his work in our country will come to an end. Until his work will come, his plan will come to fulfillment. God will not stop working. Hallelujah. Because he's a God that starts a work and that does not leave it half done. He starts a work and you bring it to completion. Are we coming together right here? Amen. 
Now, if we have that in the mind, when we understand that God is still working, though we may not see it, though we may not understand in which way God is working, the next move, beloved, that we have to make as men and women of faith who believe that God has not stopped working, God is still involved in the business of healing, God is still involved in the business of setting the captive free, God is still involved in the business of making your life better. If you have that in your mind and you believe it in your heart, the next move you have to make, beloved, is to wait on the Lord. Am I talking to somebody right there? That's why this morning we want to look from this passage and discuss a topic that I titled uh, Waiting on the Lord. Somebody say waiting on the Lord. Lord. Somebody say it again, waiting on the Lord. Lord. Beloved, I have come to realize that uh, one of the most difficult things to do in the life of faith is to wait on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I don't have a witness this morning by me. One of the most difficult things in the Christian life is to wait upon the Lord. It is to pray and believe that God has answered and go back and sit and say, I am waiting for the fulfillment of my answer. That's something that many of us, uh, we do struggle with. Because we live in the fast world. Everything is fast. Fast internet with the 5G. Fast car. Fast food. You name them. Fast technology. Fast this and fast that. Everything is fast. We all want to get everything today and now. Whenever you start something, you want to get rich today and now. Everything is fast. Everything is fast. Even people, when they come to church, they want the service to run fast. <laughs> the only thing that is not the fast, it is giving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. People want everything to go fast, but when it comes to giving, that's when they start thinking. Giving is not the fast. Giving has to be delayed a bit. Well, and we want as well, many of us Christians, pastors and uh, even the laymen there sitting there in the church, many of us, we also want God to work at our pace. We want to God to do things as uh, really as really uh, uh, as, as, as we want them whenever we want them however we want them and beloved because of that because of that attitude of being of rushing things of being wanting everything to be done faster beloved if we will be honest with ourselves you will find out that uh, if you were not really rushing things maybe just maybe you wouldn't have been in the situation that you are in today some of the things, some of the consequences that you are suffering from today, you wouldn't have suffered from them if you were not fast. Am I making sense right there? Does somebody agree with me right here? Amen. Some of the things that we are rushing with for today, beloved, that we are facing today, is just because we do not want to wait on the Lord. You wouldn't have been suffering today, whatever you are suffering from, if you had just been patient. Some people today, they find themselves a single parent. Just why? Because they didn't want to wait on the Lord. They didn't want to wait on the Lord. They wanted it now. I want it now. If I don't get it now, it looks like the world will come to an end. If I don't get it now, it looks like things, uh, oh, I mean, uh, it will finish. You want it now. We all want now as a consequence is uh, now we find ourselves uh, very diff- I mean, difficult moment. And we're crying. It seems that like God is not coming through. Now, the prophet of Africa has uh, understood, beloved, the importance uh, of waiting on the Lord. Somebody say, waiting on the Lord. Please, even from afar, look at your neighbor and say, waiting on, wait on the Lord. This prophet, beloved, has understood, actually, the importance of waiting on the Lord. And he has really something to let us know. Habakkuk is known as a complaining prophet who during the course of his ministry has questioned God like more than any other prophet. 
Most of the prophets in the Bible, they will receive the word from God and they will transmit it. They will deliver it unto people. But Habakkuk was a man who started his book even with the complaint. He's more of a complaining and praying prophet than a preaching prophet. Because most of the prophets will appear to you and say, that says the Lord and this and that. But Habakkuk has spent time in his ministry in the presence of God, praying and talking to God, questioning God about so many things. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to somebody right here? Amen. There is such a depth in his book. He begins his book by complaining, by asking God because of the injustice that was in the land, because of things that were not okay. He started asking God questions in the book of Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 2. Put it on the screen for us. He will complain like many of us we do. How long shall I cry for help and God you will not hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever find yourself making that prayer? <laughs> Read it there clearly. Oh Lord, how long, Mother God, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or, or cry to you violence and you will still not the same. That is what his problem. God, I've been praying, I've been crying, I've been seeking your face. I've been trusting you for this, for that. But how long, God, will you, will, you, will you take to answer me? Why are you not paying attention to my cry? Why are you not looking at my tears? Why are you not looking at my enemy that have turned my life to a life uh, laughing stock? God, where are you when I'm losing this, when I'm losing that? Beloved, if we are to be honest with ourselves, many a time we have found ourselves making this kind of prayer. Hallelujah. I'm not exempted either. Yeah. I found myself even in moments where you go on your knees, you look and say, God, who has sinned? What kind of sin have I committed that your blood cannot cleanse? What have I done that my life may be in this position? Habakkuk was in that position. But beloved, the Bible shows us when God answered him, it was not the answer that he expected. God's answer came to him while he was crying. God said, for your nation, I will use even a wicked nation to punish you. I will use a wicked nation to punish you. Now, our text show us, beloved, something that Abakaka did. He acted as somebody who knew God. He was crying and saying, God, how long will you hear my cry? How long will you adhere to the plea of my heart? God gave him an, an, a contrary, an answer, an unexpected answer. But the next thing that Habakkuk do after hearing from God, he said, I will establish myself upon the tower and wait to hear what you will say. Uh, yeah. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying there. Yeah. A man that has been crying for help. A man that has been crying for a change in his life, in his ministry, in his family, in his land. He got a bad answer from God. But he does not withdraw from the presence of God. He does not take a decision of trying next door. But the Bible says in chapter 2 verse 1, he said, I will establish myself upon the tower and I will keep watching to wait and see what the Lord is going to tell me. Mm. Let me submit this to you, beloved. Those who know their God, they understand one thing. Once God is on the move, once God is working, what you have to do is not to withdraw, but is to wait on him and see what he's going to do. Amen. Am I talking to somebody right here? Those who know their God, they have built up, they have developed this confidence. They have come to understand if God is at work, the next move that I have to make is not to run, is not to continue to complain, is not to continue to cry. The next move that I have to make is to wait upon the Lord. So I have come to tell you today, you need to wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. To wait upon the Lord, beloved, it simply means to trust that the God is working. God is up to something which I may not see right now, but I am prepared to wait for him until he comes through. Am I talking right here? To wait for the Lord, as I'm saying right here, to wait for the Lord is to trust that the God is already at work. Even if I can, even though I cannot see it or I cannot understand it, I do just uh, 
believe that the God is at work, so therefore I'm waiting. Therefore I'm waiting on Him. Let me tell you this, beloved. Waiting on the Lord, it is an act of faith. Can somebody give me an amen right here? Amen. Waiting on the Lord is an act of faith. Yeah. It is an act that somebody do. It's an act that somebody does actually. It's an act that somebody, somebody does because he believes that the God is at work. So therefore I trust him that he's working and therefore I am going to do what I'm going to wait. It is an act of faith. Waiting on the Lord is only given to those who have faith in God. Those who wait upon the Lord are those who believe that uh, their situation will not remain the same. Are those who believe that uh, my God is already at work. Though I don't see it, uh, it may seem that my life is formless and void. I need to understand that God is still on the first day of his work. Before we get to the sixth day, he will sit down, he will Will finish his work and you will enter his rest while I'll be worshiping him for the great thing that he has done in my life. They wait on him because they trust him. They wait on him because they know that beloved, he is at work. Rebecca tells us here, beloved, the reason why we are to wait upon the Lord it is because God has everything good in his own time. Amen. Hallelujah. Why do we have to wait upon the Lord? God told Habakkuk this is saying, write down the vision. Put it rightly, plainly on the table that he that is running may see it. Because the vision, it is for an appointed time. Somebody say appointed time. time. Somebody say it again, appointed time. time. Every plan of God Every vision, every prophetic word, maybe, that you may, have, you may have received in your life, it was given to you for a pro, an appointed time. The Bible says, when the time came, the virgin conceived. They're talking about Mary, hallelujah. Yeah. Before time, Mary could not conceive. She had to wait for God's time that the God's things may begin to happen. God's works According to his plan, our responsibility is not to anticipate the move of God, but our responsibility, beloved, it is to wait upon God, to wait for God's time so that the Lord may do in his time what he has prepared to do. This is sometimes what we fail to understand. This is sometimes what we struggle, many of us, yeah. If we are making many, as I'm saying, so many mistakes here and there, sometimes, reverend, it is because we have become so much impatient. Church, we are, there is a saying, we are living in the first world. We are also too fast to lose hope. Because our world also is so fast. We are fast to lose hope. When you try one thing, after a minute it did not happen, you start thinking otherwise. We can't wait on the Lord. But Habakkuk is showing us here how we deal with God. How we pray. He presented himself before the Lord. And at the end of the day, he decided. He decided in his heart that he was going to wait for the Lord. He decided that he will no longer complain. He will no longer move left and right. But what he will do, he will sit down, position himself, take his stand, and wait for the Lord. Beloved, this morning, what the Lord wants you to do in this difficult moment that we may be going through, in whatsoever time our world is facing, the church, what the church need to do is to learn to wait upon the Lord because our God has not abandoned us our God has not forsaken this world but God is working in a way that some of us that we are not seeing him God is working even as you are staying home because you have not resumed work maybe your company has closed down I want to let you know God is still working what you want to do is to wait upon the Lord somebody give me a proper amen right here now I want to quickly, in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, submit to you three points how to wait uh, on the Lord. Because Habakkuk has come to understand this thing. He started by complaining, but he moved to the point where he understood that complaint does not solve things. Are you with me right here? Yes. 
Amen. Beloved, complaining, mourning, putting sad face on Facebook, like many who love to love to do it. Any small thing, he goes on Facebook and he posts his face, I'm sad. Who are you talking to? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible does not say be sad and I repeat be sad. The Bible says rejoice and I repeat and rejoice. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right there. Hallelujah. Amen. And you go there, you put that sad face. And all, I always question myself. When you put that sad face and somebody click like, I always ask a question, what do you like? Is it my sadness or what, what is it that you are liking in my sadness? <laughs> Hallelujah, people of God. You put sad face, you put the crying face, somebody click like. I never understand that thing. So you mean you, you like the way I'm sad, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Habakkuk has something to tell us on how to wait on the Lord. Number one, how do we have to wait on the Lord? Number one, you wait on the Lord patiently. Write it down. You, write, you wait on the Lord patiently. You wait on the Lord patiently. Listen to verse 3 of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, verse 3. It says this. Watch this. He said, for still the vision await its appointed time. That means it's set for a particular time, right? Before time it will not happen. After time it will not happen. It will happen where? On time. What time? The appointed time. God's appointed time. Can we agree on that day? Hallelujah. Can you agree with that? And he said this. It has hastens to the end. It will not lie. Now God who give the vision, who give the prophetic word, God who give the promise, he's saying, the promise that I'm giving to you, the work that I'm doing in your life, uh, it is uh, for the appointed uh, time. But this is the guarantee that I'm giving to you. It has, number one, the time. Somebody say time. time. The promise of God in your life, the work of God in your life, it has a time where it's supposed to end, where it's supposed to come to fulfillment. There is a time attached to it. And God gives us a guarantee, says this, uh, hey, this is the guarantee that I'm giving you, it will not lie. I don't know if I'm making sense by then. It will not lie. Do you have the word that God released in your life? Uh, corona will not stop it because God's word in your life uh, will not lie, but it will come to pass uh, in an appointed time. I say it will come to pass in an appointed time. Somebody say appointed time. Appointed time. And God guarantee us, he said, I am the God, the almighty God, and I'm telling you one thing, it will not lie. That is a guarantee. You, can argue, you cannot argue that. You cannot fight with me when it comes to my work. You cannot fight with me when it comes to my pro, my provision. You cannot fight with me when it comes to fulfilling what I plan to do your life, in your life. I will do it in the appointed time and you have my words, you have my guarantee. It will not uh, lie. However, God say, if it seems, can you see that? If it seems slow, because it may seem slow. Why? Because as men we see things differently from this God sees them. If it gets to a point, you begin to feel, to see like the promise is, is slowing. What you are to do, he say, wait. Wait for it. How? Patiently, because it will surely come to pass. What you just need to do, beloved. Exercise patience. I say exercise patience. Exercise patience. The Lord has set everything for a specific, for a particular time. God does not rush things, but God does things in his time. Somebody say amen. amen. He does things in his own time. He's a patient God. God does not do a rush work. God does not do an unfinished work, but it takes time to polish his work. So much so when he brings it on the market, everybody that looks at it says that quality. Hallelujah, beloved. Amen. 
The Lord is still working on you. I, uh, I repeat, the Lord is still working on you. By the time He will put it on the mind, put you on the market. People are making masks now. But when your own will come to the market, they say, I want that mask. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if I'm making sense right there. Uh, Hallelujah. We are waiting for the last moment. In John chapter 2, we are told, beloved. We are told, we are told of a man who had a wedding at Canaan. The Bible says he served wine, people drank, and then he got finished. Until Mary went to Jesus Christ, he said, these people, they lack wine. And the Christ told her, what is it between you and I, woman? My time has not yet come. When his time came, he made wine. And when that wine was served, people have been drinking since the beginning of the wedding. But when that wine came, they asked. As the mass of the ceremony, why have you kept such a beautiful wine, a sweet wine, until this moment? Some of us, we are the wine of the last minute. Let them drink what is on the market right now. Because by the time we will be released, somebody will ask, where have you been? I've been looking for a man such as you. I've been looking for a woman such as you. There are some other that are about to be waking up. By the time they will wake up, they say, behold, this time, the bone of my bones. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let others go before. Amen. Adam will not see them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to somebody right here? He's waiting, behold. Beloved, our God wants us to wait on him patiently. Listen to this, beloved. The Bible tells us that God is the almighty God. Do we all agree on that? Amen. He's the almighty God. God is able to say a word and in the next second it's happened. Do you agree with me already? But when we go into the book of Genesis, in spite of God's power, God's ability to do things, he has decided to create the world in six days. But God, you could have just breathed it out and said, world, all of a sudden everything falls in place. But he never do that. I don't know if I'm making sense that. He never does that, beloved. He waited. He needed to do everything. The first day the Bible said, the earth was formless and void. God comes out and he said, let the waters uh, that is on the, 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 the earth may be separated with the, uh, the water that is uh, above. And it was separated. And the Bible said, God said, let it be light. And that was all for the first day. And God looked at it and said, the Bible said, God saw that that was good. But God, you still have time. Why don't you continue your way? No, that work was only made for the first day. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. What you're experiencing is just a day work. I don't know if I'm communicating this with somebody right there. What you need to do, exercise patience. God can breathe it out in a second. But he's a God of process. Yeah. Our God is a God of process. He does everything in the time. Beloved, you are not an abandoned project. Let me say to you this morning, you are not an abandoned project, but you are a project set for the appointed time. I feel like screaming hallelujah. Amen. You are a project for the appointed time. Yes, sir. Somebody say, I'm not an abandoned project. I'm not an abandoned project. My marriage is not an abundant project. God is still working. So I'm waiting patiently. I will not rush. Let it not rush to give your body to a man. Wait for the appointed time that you may be honored. Pastors, ministers, let us not compromise the gospel by going the other route to grow our church. Let us patiently wait on the Lord. Let us not cheat at work. So that we may get promotion. No. Let us wait for the appointed time. Amen. It is coming. It may seem slow, but it will not lie. It will come to pass. What you need? Patience. Amen. Patience. Amen. Sometimes, brother, you need to get, ask for a glass of water. Am I talking to somebody right here? Amen. You need to ask for a glass of water. Give me a glass of water and just drink. <sighs> okay. I'm going to wait. You go further in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I'm communicating right there. Oh, yes. Because I know he's working. Oh, yes. And he said he will not lie. He said it will surely come to pass. What do I do? I wait. How patiently. Oh. Secondly, how do you wait on the Lord? You wait on the Lord 
with watchfulness and prayer. First, you wait patiently. Secondly, you wait on the Lord with watchfulness and patience. I will recommend you on this note to go on our YouTube channel. Find the message that we preached last time. Watch and pray, lest you may fall, right? Listen to that message, it will bless you. Habakkuk chapter 2, give me verse 1. Verse 1 says this, listen, beloved. Listen as we, 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 we move him to move to finish this first service. He says this, verse 1. I will take my stand. This is a man that has been arguing with God. Are you, are you following me right here? He has been arguing with God. Now he said, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint because he has been complaining like you and me. Now he says this. As I'm waiting on the Lord, this is how I'm going to do it. I will not be waiting on the Lord being sleeping on my couch. Hallelujah. Amen. I will not be waiting on the Lord being busy with other things. No. I will be waiting on the Lord while standing and watching him to do whatever he's doing. That I may know what I will say after he has answered me. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. This is how you wait on the Lord. You do not wait on the Lord, beloved, with your eyes closed. Prophet were men that were known as watchmen. They were always on the tower. They were always vigilant. They were always alerted. They wanted to see what God will say and what the enemy is about to do. That's how you wait on the Lord. That's the attitude of the man who believes that God is at work. That is the attitude of a man that believes that God is doing something. So therefore, I will not sleep. I will not let my eyes close up. I will stay in prayer and I will be watching what the Lord is doing. I want to see, I want to hear. Beloved, when you are waiting on the Lord, it gets you to the point whereby you need to move out of this world. Am I talking to somebody right here? Maybe right now you are trying, you are going through so much difficulties. You don't understand what is going on around your life. What you have to do, beloved, when you are waiting on the Lord and time gets tougher, what you do, withdraw from this world. Withdraw from your situation. Withdraw from whatsoever trouble. And go in the presence of God. Establish yourself in the watch post and begin to watch what is going on. What is troubling my house? What is troubling my husband? What is making my children to be at all times sick? Why am I always having problems at work? Why is this? I try this. Even after I've been given a word, it's the contrary that is happening to me. What I've been praying for is the contrary that I'm getting. What you need to do right now, beloved, go into the tower and become watchful. Mm. When a child of God begins to lose his watchfulness and his life of prayer, he's giving the enemy ground Amen. to push forward. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. When you lose your watchfulness, you begin to hear the devil asking you like he did to Eve. And he say, did God really say that? Because I see you, you've been waiting around there. I saw you. I was there, I saw you turning around there. Did God really say you should wait there? And then you start asking yourself, ah, I don't really remember. I need to think about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Once you have done that, you have given him one step. Yes. He says, surely, yeah. You, you, you really need to think about that. It's a serious matter. You need to think about that. By the way, how do you come to know that? Oh, no, pastor told me. Oh! So it's not even God, it was pastor. Hey, yes. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. Yes, Do you see how you begin to shift? You started by saying, God told me. Mm -hmm. Then you move, pastor told me. Are you sure of your pastor? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's why at time, withdraw from the world. Establish yourself in the tower. I enough of hearing from men. Enough of hearing from my mother. Enough of hearing from the, the situation in the country. Now I want to hear from the Lord. Amen. I'm waiting for, for him. How? In his presence. 
Beloved, when you are waiting for the Lord, go into the Word of God and begin to read. Maybe just maybe the Lord can drop a verse for you to guide you. When you are waiting for the Lord, you come to a service such as this. Be watchful to listen to the message that is being preached. Because that message can be an answer for your waiting. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right there. Hallelujah, people of God. When you're waiting on the Lord, be watchful. Because you may just see something falling down there. Everybody call it the thing that has fallen down there. But you, with your eyes full of watchfulness, you say that is manna. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm communicating with somebody right there. Because if your eyes, spiritual eyes are closed, you cannot see what God is doing. Hallelujah. You wait on the Lord with watchfulness. You wait on the Lord with watchfulness. You wait on the Lord with your watchfulness. Beloved, sometimes when God answers us, he does not tell you it's me, God, moving. You want you just to see him moving. In the book of Genesis chapter 18, Abraham was waiting for Isaac. One, the Bible says one day he was sitting at the entrance, at the gate, at the door of his tent, until he saw three men passing by, right? But Abraham, with the spiritual eyes open, he understood these three men were not mere men. It was God with two angels. He rushed to them. He said, do not pass me by. Come into my house. I'll give you water to wash feet by your feet. I'll cook something for you to eat. And afterward, you will go your way. Once he has done that, as God came in his house, after eating, God asked for a toothpick. They gave him a toothpick. The meal was so nice. And as he was using the toothpick, he asked Abraham, where is Sarah, your wife? All along when you were eating, you did not ask my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, people of God. And he says she's there at the back, be cooking. He said, next time, when I come, Sarah, your wife, will be pregnant. Sarah says, is it because of the meal or you just saying this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody right Amen. now? It took Abraham to see God invite God before something could happen. He took this woman who has a, who was barren. He took this, took that woman to see that the man that was passing before her house was a man of God. He took her to, to see that and bring her husband to the point of building a room for this man of God. Because until this man of God came to their house, there was no child. God's way of providing for child, for children in this, this woman's life was by the way of inviting the man of God in their house. But God never gave them a prophecy, thou shalt invite my servant in your house so that I may unlock what you need. He takes them just to be watchful and see God's solution is coming by inviting the man of God. Yeah. I don't know if I'm talking to a church that has the ears this morning. Hallelujah. God will not always serve you on the, prayer, on the trail of, of gold. Sometimes God's answer will come in a package that is not like that. The king can be born in a manger. It's the only wise man who, hey, who can see the star, follow the star and go to the manger and see, see a poor baby and worship a poor baby because they have seen the star. Unless you see a star, you will not go to the manger. Unless you see a star, you will not worship the king. I don't know if I'm communicating right now. It takes you, beloved, to wait. And finally, you wait upon the Lord being actively involved in his work. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. While waiting for the Lord, you are patient, you are watchful, and finally, you wait on the Lord being actively involved in his work. Beloved, in the scripture, in the scripture, waiting on the Lord is not something passive, but it's something active. Waiting on the Lord is not a passive, but it is active. It means this, when you are waiting on the Lord for whatsoever thing, you don't fold up your hand and say, I have prayed, I have faith, I have sown my seed, I have done this, I have done that, I have sown my seed, and therefore I'm going to sit down and wait. No, that's not how you wait on the Lord. You wait on the Lord being actively involved in the work of God. You are involved in the work of God, not for the sake of helping God, but for the sake of fulfilling your responsibility. 
Hallelujah. Because man has his responsibility, God has also his own responsibility. When we are waiting on the Lord, somebody here trusting God for a promotion, don't resign yet unless God says so. Stay into that light, into that work. Continue to do faithfully what that has been placed under your care until God will exalt you. Am I talking to somebody right there? Yeah. Are you working as a domestic worker in somebody's house? Please do it joyfully while waiting on the Lord. Do not curse them, but serve them faithfully while you are waiting on the Lord. Am I talking to somebody right there? Yeah. You are praying for your husband to change. Wait for that change to come while you are being, while doing what you are called to do. You cannot wait for your husband to change from an angry man to a sweet man and you serve him himself and yourself anger. No! Wait doing what God has asked you to do. Be involved in what you are called to do. Am I talking to somebody right there? He is coming back home angry. Give him a big smile. Stand from your seat and give him a nice kiss. Let him change, let him change his mind. Am I making sense to, to, in what I'm saying right here? Hallelujah, people of God. Amen. You wait on the Lord being actively involved. It's when we are actively involved in the work of God that we will be able, beloved, to see what God is doing. Because guess this, beloved. Every vision Every divine promise has a place of divine fulfillment. You understand what I'm saying right now? Every vision that God gives you, every word of God, it's for an appointed time and it's supposed to be fulfilled in a certain place that the Lord has chosen. Christ was meant to be born where? In Bethlehem. Am I making sense right there? When they were still outside Bethlehem, the queen, the, queen, the emperor in that time ordained that they may be saints so that everybody may come back to enroll themselves. And Christ moved from where they were into Bethlehem because the prophecy was to be fulfilled where? In Bethlehem. Now how do you get to know the place of divine fulfillment? By you being actively involved in the work of God taking care of what he has given you. When I'm talking about work of God, I'm not just talking about serving God in the church, but I mean doing what the Lord has given you to do. Hallelujah. You get what I'm saying right there? Wait, God's waiting room, beloved, it is not like doctor's waiting room, whereby people sit crying in pain, waiting to hear next, or waiting to hear their names. No. God's waiting room is like a workshop. Somebody say workshop. When you are waiting for the Lord, you are in the workshop. He's working on you. He's shaping you up. He's preparing you for your next divine appointment. In the meantime, you are busy doing what he wants you to do. When you are doing what you want, he wants you to do, he is doing the also getting you ready for your divine appointment. You wait on the Lord like in a workshop. God's waiting room, beloved, is not doctor's waiting room. Where patients painfully cry. They complain. They cry for this, they cry for that. But God's waiting room is a place of prayer. Hallelujah. God's waiting room is a place of prayer. Where people like Habakkuk move from complaining to saying the just shall live by faith. The man started the book by complaining. But as he go, he went into the waiting room. He said that he realized, now God is working. I need to stop complaining and begin to understand that the just shall live uh, by faith. While you are wait, waiting for the Lord, beloved, get involved in the work of God. You are trusting God for do to do one thing for you. Get involved in the work of God. The Bible tells us of a man, I'm closing there. And of a man by, man by name of Simeon. This man has a promise. The promise was that he will not die until he sees Jesus Christ. Until he sees the consolation of Israel. The Bible tells us this. The man knew he will not die until he sees Christ. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you were some of us, God is to give you such promises. Hey, they are God. God himself, pastor, he has told me I will not die. So what would I be come to do to the church? Because God told me, whatever I do, I will not die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying there? Amen. God is saying no matter what, I will not die. So I'm going to elsewhere to look for Christ. No. 
The Bible said this man was a righteous man. And he was full of uh, the Holy Spirit. That means he was waiting for the Lord being actively involved in the work of God. To the point that the Bible tells us that one day after Christ was born, seven days after, according to the law, Christ was uh, supposed to be taken to the church to be prayed for, to be dedicated unto the Lord. And the Simeon was somewhere. He did not know that Christ was already born. He did not know that that Sunday morning, Christ would be taken to the church. But because he was actively involved in the work of God, God led him by the Holy Spirit that that morning he may go to the church. When he go to the church, there come Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus Christ. Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus Christ. They thought they were just going there to dedicate him. But what they did not know, bringing Christ to the church that day, it was a fulfillment of a promise in somebody's life. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. It's when you remain in the presence of God, God begins to cause things to move. Once he has signified to the left to begin to move, he comes and shake you and say, time of sleeping is over. It's about time that you begin to be to walk toward the church. Why? Because the day has come for your promises to come to pass. How does that happen? Because the man was in the presence of God. Waiting on the Lord is a difficult thing to do. But we have to call to do it if you want to see the glory of God. It's an act of faith that we do because we believe that God is at work. So therefore, I'm going to wait on him. And how do I wait on him? Patiently. How do I wait on him? In watchfulness and in prayer. How do I wait on him? By being deeply involved, actively involved in the work of God. May God bless you. Amen. Why don't you arise on your feet? Why don't you arise on your feet? We bless you, our dear viewers. We thank you for watching, for connecting with us. We pray that the grace of God may rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are watching us on, faith, on Facebook, on YouTube, please kindly subscribe to our channel there that you may get more video. And uh, you can contact us. You have uh, our contact details are there. Email us, WhatsApp us. Call us if you want as well to support the ministry. Do so for the glory of the Lord. For those of you watching live, we're going to stop right there. And we pray that the Lord may reach me. Bless you. Until we come again your way, stay safe, stay blessed, and let the grace of God abound in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say, amen. Then give to the Lord a round of applause as we are saying bye-bye to those that are watching live. Glory to the Lord.